QuickBooks Online 2023, Progress Invoicing Example Number 2, Customer Deposit. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file. We started up in a prior presentation. Remember, we're in the accounting view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top, switch the view down below. We're gonna open up some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again. Tabbing to the middle, down to the reports on the left opening up the balance sheet as that is thinking it's not thinking there's nothing there but i go to the tab of the right anyways reports and then we'll open up the profit and loss report back to the tab to the middle i'm going to put the date range this time from 010125 to 06325 just for the first half of the year nothing's in it because our prior practice problem was for the second half of the year tab to the right I'm gonna do the same thing here, 010125 to 06325 and run it. Nothing there because it's for the first half of the year. Let's go back to the first tab. Last time we created our project and we are in project number two now. And, and we made an estimate for project number two based on this information estimate for 100,000 didn't record anything. Now we have the first deposit that we would like to receive from uh, the client if they accept the estimate. So now we're going to say we're going to get $10,000 before we've even had any expenses yet. Last time, all we did was just record the billing when the billing happened with an invoice. This time we would like to focus a little bit more on the revenue recognition. So the, the thing is, if I make an invoice, for it, then what's going to happen is it's going to increase accounts receivable, which is what we want. But the other side is going to be going to revenue, uh, which is which is not what we want. So there's a couple different ways that we can deal with that. So one this one way that's kind of like the simplest way, but it could cause a, a few issues with regards to the to the collection being as easy would be if I look at my flow chart here. You've got an invoice, receive payment, and record deposits. Now, if I'm going to get receiving the payment before I do the work, then you would say I wouldn't normally want to create an invoice. I would rather enter the receipt of the payment, the ten thousand uh, down, and and then I can apply it to the invoice that I'm going to create basically in a future time period. So. I'll first take a look at that option. The second option would be to create the invoice, but have the invoice not record to revenue, but instead record to some other account, account like a liability account. So we're not recognizing revenue when basically we make the invoice. Let's start with the first option. I'm gonna enter in the first option, show you what it looks like, and then I'm gonna actually delete it and then run with the second option uh, so that we can continue on and show you the difference between the two. So if I was to go in here, we could say, hey, look, here's the estimate that we gave you. I'm going to go to the sales tab and we could say, here's the estimate. And we could say that based on the estimate, we want $10,000. We could put that in the note or the message or in the email that we send them. Here's our estimate. We need $10,000 down. We don't send them an invoice for it. We just send them the estimate and the information of how much we want down and then they just pay us on it without an invoice. We're not tracking accounts receivable and that could work quite well. That would be fine. 
The only kind of issue with the invoice is sometimes the invoice has the payment options that are kind of linked to the invoice that can make it a little bit easier to give the payment. But if that's not an issue, if they know how to pay you and whatnot, then you could just say, you know, make give me a payment for the 10,000. And then when we receive the payment, we can do the second step in our normal kind of flow chart over here, which is just to receive the payment. So I can go into my projects. I might do that from project number two. And I can say that we're going to receive the payment without an invoice related to it. Project number two, let's say that happens on 1125. Uh, Whatever the payment is, I won't put it here, but it's gonna go into, I'm just gonna put it directly into the checking account as opposed to putting it into a clearing account just so we can uh, skip that added kind of step for simplicity's sake. And we're gonna say that it was for 10,000. Now, normally here, there's gonna be a payment down here or an invoice that I can apply it to. I don't have one. What's the system gonna do then? Well, it's a receive payment. That means it's going to lower accounts receivable. There's nothing in accounts receivable. So it's gonna make a negative accounts receivable for this particular client and project. And then the other side is gonna to go to uh, uh, the, the, ca the cash, obviously is gonna go up and it'll create like a credit that I can later apply to the invoice. That's the nice thing about this method that works quite nicely. So I can save and close and it says you, you didn't select any invoice. We'll save this payment as a credit to your customer since you didn't select an invoice. That's what we want. That gives you this, that nice matching kind of system. So I'm gonna go back up and I'm gonna say what happened then if I run the report on the balance sheet. Now we've got our, our checking account has gone up and we've got this negative receivable. Note that negative receivable also isn't exactly right because we would rather have a positive liability or something like that, usually when we got a deposit, because a negative receivable means we owe them money, which we do, because we haven't done anything yet. Usually that should be like an unearned revenue type of thing. However, the negative receivable works nicely internally because I'd like to match up the receivable to an invoice I'm gonna make at a future point in time. And the accounts receivable is the account to do that and if we needed to make it a period end adjustment for financial reporting, external reporting, it would be fairly easy for us to take those negative receivables and make an, a, a journal entry for external reporting purposes to put them into a liability. So that's not perfect, but that's where it goes there. And if I go to the income statement, nothing's on the income statement. That's the point. We don't want it on the income statement because we haven't earned uh, the revenue yet at this point in time. Now, internally, if I look at my customers over here, if I go to my sales and go to my customers, customer number two, I've got the, I've got the estimate and the payment, which this side is where it works very nicely from the bookkeeping side of things, because now I can easily say, I can easily look at this and say, okay, the next, the next thing that needs to be happening is that, is that I'm going to invoice them and I should be able to apply this prepayment to the next invoice that happens. So I'm gonna make an invoice just to show you what I mean on that. And then, and then I'll delete these two things and show you the other method. So if I was to say, for example, I'm gonna make an invoice and we're gonna say, okay, this is for customer uh, number two. We could pull it in from the estimate if we want. So, so if I was to make the next invoice, from the estimate, it's gonna be, what did I, what did we say for the estimate? It's gonna be 25%, let's say 25%, 25%, 25,000. And then we'll say, copy it on over. And let's say this happens on 115, which we're just using it for practice purposes because I will delete it. So you may not wanna record this on your end because I'm just gonna delete it. but. Uh, there we have it. So it comes out to the 25,000. What's the invoice going to be doing? It's going to increase the accounts receivable and the other side is going to be going to the, the revenue generally. We'll talk about the revenue recognition is issues with the revenue. But the point is I already have 10,000 that I received that I can match up to this invoice. So if I save and close it, for example, then we've got the 10,000 unapplied amount of the payment 
and the invoice of the 25, I would like to apply these two out, which I can do by going up top and saying that we want to make a payment for uh, job number two. And you can see on the payment side, now I have an invoice and I have the unapplied uh, amount. So I can match those two out at this point, which again, works very nicely from an internal reporting perspective. So now if I look at this, it's, it's beautifully laid out from a bookkeeping standpoint, because now I've got the estimate, I got the payment that I received in advance, and I've got the invoice, which now shows me the charge on the invoice and the amount that was applied to it. And I can give this invoice to the client now, showing that we still have the balance of the 25,000 on the invoice to be paid. If I go back to the balance sheet then, I can see then in the checking account, now we've got the, the 10,000, the receivables is now a positive number. So note that that negative receivable is only a temporary problem uh, because the timing difference, it'll, it'll go away. So it's, so, you know, that's still an issue, but it's kind of manageable issue. And now we're where we want to be. And from a, again, from the internal side if i was gonna have a question from the client this side of things looks very nice right it's very everything's lined up quite nicely all right so now i'm gonna delete that and show the other method uh that that we could use so i'm gonna say maybe the problem with this method is the one problem is the payment that i have right here uh i i received without giving them an invoice i gave them the estimate and told them to give me a payment of ten thousand based on the estimate but sometimes it's easier to send the invoice depending on how they're gonna pay you if it's gonna be connected to the payment options of the invoice or something like that. That's one of the major kind of issues. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually go into the payment and go more and delete it, delete the payment. And then I'm gonna go back into the invoice and delete the invoice. So I'm gonna more, I'm gonna delete the invoice. So now we're back to where we were. If I go back over here, We've, we got nothing in our reports again, same, same spot we were at before. So the second option is that I would like to bill the client for, for the $10,000. So now I'm gonna say, all right, invoice $10,000 because it'll be easier because I have their email or whatever for them to, to pay me with the invoice setup that we have. So we're gonna say, all right, project number two, I still can pull it in from my estimate, so I can do that still. Here's my progress invoicing, just according to our plan, 10% down uh, that we want. So I'm gonna say 10% down, save it on in, and everything looks really nice that I can then give to the client uh, that gives me the 10,000. But the problem is that if I do it this way, it's gonna record revenue because th these are all going to revenue. So what I'd like to do is not record it to revenue, but record it instead to like another, like a liability account, which, it, which you might call unearned revenue, you might call customer deposit. I'm gonna call it billings, which is sometimes a term used for like a, 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 a job cost system. So I'm gonna make two transactions here. I'm gonna reduce it back down to zero uh, by by reducing the revenue account, and then I'm going to put it into basically a billings account. This, so this is a little bit ugly on the invoice, but you'll see what it does here. So if I make a new item, and I say it's a service item, and I'm just going to say reduce revenue account item, just to say exactly what it's doing. You can name it whatever you want, but I'm going to say there it is it's going to go into the revenue of sales of products and i'm going to go boom and then i'm going to say that i want it for the whole amount the ten thousand to reduce the revenue not by a hundred thousand but by ten thousand negative <laughs> negative ten thousand get it right this is going to be class two so that brings it down to zero and where I really want it to go is not to revenue, but to the liability account. So I'll make another item here, which I'm gonna call billings. So I'll say new and 
it's going to be a non-inventory let's call it billings billings account copy paste it's going to go not to the services not to an income tape account at all but to a liability account so i'm going to make a new account it's going to be an other current liability the second thing doesn't i'm just going to call it other current liability and call it billings and so we'll save it and so save and close so that is going to be the for the full amount again the ten thousand i'll put it in class number two so what this does then it, it allows us to use the invoice because the invoice allows us to collect an email and do all that kind of stuff but then this last bit down here is going to make it so these items i don't have to use other weird items i can just say i'm just going to reverse what it did to the income statement side with another item that just reverses the income account to take it out of income so it's like another little journal entry at the bottom here reducing revenue this increased revenue we reduce revenue and then we put it into a liability account instead so what's this going to do ultimately it's an invoice it's going to be increased in accounts receivable that's what invoices do it's going to be negated out of the revenue from this whole thing and instead the other side is going to be credited to the billings account which is a liability uh, type of account similar to unearned revenue or customer deposit or something so now and i can send this to them even though it's a little bit wonky with these t last two pieces and i can send that to the client so i'm going to save it and close it so then there it is if i go back to the our financials and run it now we've got accounts receivable which went up which that's perfect and the other side went to billings so if i go into this i can see my accounts receivable going up with the invoice perfect and the other side going to billings which is a liability account uh which is which is what we want going back up and then i'm going to go to my income statement nothing's on the income statement because we haven't recognized any revenue which is basically what we want go into the first tab if i go into my my sales and my customers customer number two now we've got our normal kind of invoice process again and at least the collection process from this point you know uh should be fairly straightforward meaning the next thing that we expect to happen is we expect to get paid uh on the invoice right so let's go ahead and and say that happens so now we build them and then they're going to pay us for uh the invoice so we might do this from the projects again so i'll go into the projects and then i'm going to say project number two and then let's say now we receive payment for project number two and i'm going to say that this happened on 115 so cash payment it's going to go into the checking account directly and this time we've got the invoice we entered the invoice first and now we're going to receive the payment from it like normal and i'm going to say save and what's this going to do it's going to reduce accounts receivable and the other side is going to go into the cash so i'm going to say okay and then i can go back on over here and say balance sheet what happens the the accounts receivable goes down and it went in to the checking account and this billings account uh, is still here on the liabilities if i show this by class by the way then notice that this billings account is a balance sheet account that that it, that it breaks out by class which it doesn't do all the time with some of the other ones like checking unless you're into a higher unless you pay more for it but this is the quickbooks pro plus but this could be useful to us that it breaks out the billings here so that we can track the billings by class that's why the class and the jobs that double thing could be useful for us so we'll see that more in future presentations nothing's over here on the profit and loss first tab uh, we can see that there's no income in the project yet even though we collected 10,000 on it this is basically showing kind of an income statement for the projects that's why the balance sheet having the classes of the billings is kind of nice that it breaks that out by class that's why that redundancy is kind of nice and then if I go into the sales over here 
and I look at customer number two, now we've got the estimate, we invoiced for it, and the payment is here. So everything looks quite nice from a collection standpoint uh, using this method as well, although the invoice is a little bit wonky uh, to set up the invoice. So we'll continue with this process next time and go through, okay, what would be happening once we actually run costs and then we've gonna, we're gonna bill the client based on this schedule, even though our rec revenue recognition will be different you know, than that schedule. That's our problems going forward.